It's great to be here. Thank you, um, Mike. Uh, actually, thank you for introducing. That's very nice of you. But Mike, thank you for allowing us to uh, disrupt your day like this. This is this every is really, day. I'll take it. That's uh, all right. No, this is. <laughs> I think um, you could all be forgiven um, if you thought this was sort of a, some sort of a stunt, uh, that this is what uh, administrations do from time to time. They, they focus on things that have some certainly moral importance, and this does. Uh, but I want to say the reason this is important, in addition to being having a certain moral dimension that's really important, it's smart. Diversity is not something you do. It's not something you do because it's convenient. It's something that is part of everything that makes up an economy, a community, a neighborhood, a family. And that's what this executive order is about. I need to make the point that Pennsylvania is open for business for everybody. Now, you know, I came out of a business background. I mean, actually, I felt really at home walking around these two buildings here because um, I felt like this was going back to where I, I started. And where I started was with an understanding that if I didn't try to have a diverse workforce, I wasn't going to have a very good workforce. I wasn't going to have a very good company. Because I was going to be shutting myself off from people who could actually expand and help the talent pool. Why would I want to do that? That's not smart. I built my business, I think, successfully twice, uh, not in spite of doing things in a slightly different way, but because I did, because I embrace diversity. And in this executive order, I'm trying to, to make sure that this state is about fairness, not just because it's right, but because it's smart. Uh, it actually works. Uh, as I said, our economy doesn't work optimally if some people are shut out of the market's opportunities. It doesn't work. Our communities don't work if some members are arbitrarily excluded from them. Our families don't work if we shun certain people from, from our families. And that's why I've chosen to promote the practice of fairness in this executive order. It's a small step in the broader effort to make sure all Pennsylvanians feel they have a real part uh, and a life that's filled with fair chances. It's a small step, but it's a really important one. So let me just get back to the idea of fairness. In the broadest possible sense, I'm doing everything I can to promote the notion of fairness in Pennsylvania. I'm doing this by investing in education, for example, for all children in all communities. I'm doing this by trying to make our communities in Pennsylvania better, all communities, by addressing, for example, the huge fiscal disparities that exist between too many of these communities and that separate too many of our communities. I'm doing this by trying to follow William Penn's proud tradition of tolerance and respect, by making Pennsylvania a great place to live and work, and work, for all people regardless of who they love, the color of their skin, their gender, or the religion they profess. And I'm trying to make our economy stronger by making it fair. It's going to work with a stronger non -set, set of non-discrimination laws, with a higher minimum wage, with more accessible voting processes, and with a long overdue implementation of the Affordable Care Act. And Pennsylvania is the right place to address these issues. We've grappled with these external, these eternal, sorry, issues since our founding, and we continue to wrestle with them today. That's as it should be in a democracy that values freedom, that values equal opportunity and self-reliance, and it's also as it should be in a democracy that is continually trying to improve itself. Fairness is at the heart of any effort to promote the values all healthy democracies hold dear, and that's why it's at the heart of any successful society. Fairness is not only right, but as I said, it's smart. Again, why? Because our economy doesn't work if some people feel that they don't have access to the opportunities everybody else does. Our free market actually runs on fairness, depends on all participants feeling they have an even shot at gaining a return from the work they do, the effort they expend, the risks they take. A tilted playing field dampens competition. It reduces it. It doesn't help it. And it makes the game less interesting. It also makes an economy less dynamic and less productive. We can't put up with that anywhere, especially not here in Pennsylvania. Our economy cannot operate on all cylinders if all cylinders are not allowed to operate. Second, our communities can't work if some of its members feel shut out. Healthy communities rely on broadly shared feelings of inclusion. Healthy communities are cohesive communities where everybody feels a part, young and old, rich and poor, men and women. Lancaster won't work as a strong community if all of its members are not permitted to contribute to it. 
Communities that make only a few people feel welcome are not really welcoming places at all. And communities that are not welcoming cannot be healthy. So all these things matter, and that's why this executive order is important. We need more than just good intentions. If we're, to go, if we're going to produce the culture of fairness, we need to succeed as a society and as an economy. We need concrete actions, not feel-good gestures, to achieve the noble goals we, we claim we want to serve. Thus, this executive order. So this executive order does four specific things. I know you've been waiting for this. First, it directs the Department of General Services er, to take specific set steps to make sure it's including the broadest possible group of people seeking to do business with the Commonwealth in our contract. Second, it directs the Department of Community and Economic Development to make sure that its awards, its grants, and economic development activities reach as broad a pool of people as possible. Third, it directs the Department of Transportation, PennDOT, to make sure its contracting activities include the broadest possible talent pool. And finally, it directs Kathy and the Department of Labor and Industry to make sure the services it provides, like job training, employment assistance training, vocational rehabilitation, employer hiring assistance, make sure all those things serve the goal of promoting inclusion and diver diversity. The point is that fairness and inclusion matter. It mattered to my company, it matters to our economy, it matters to Pennsylvania. None of us can lead full lives if all of us don't. A society that is unfair to some is unfair to all. If we want a healthy economy, if we want strong neighborhoods, if we want good families, we must have a fair society. And my hope is that this executive order is one small step in the direction of that fair society. So thank you very much again, Mike, for having us here, and thank you for doing this. Now, let me, let me sign the executive order.